Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today we'll continue with my series on the total consecration to Mary. Today summarizing the book True Devotion to Mary by St. Louis de Montfort. The book was written in 1712 when St. Louis was 39 years old and in his book he explains what true devotion to Mary is and warns us also what wrong devotion to Mary would be. He explains why we should do the total consecration, what the benefits of that consecration are. And he also explains to us why Mary is so important and why we should have an, a devotion to her. For example, he says that, quote, he's about to tell us a secret that is unknown to most Christians, even the most devout. He says that Mary is the way that leads to Jesus, that leads to God. And that he also compares her to the moon. He says that Mary is not the sun. He, she is not God. She receives the light, grace, her power from God and uh, softens it. So, for example, because we are so weak, we might be irritated by the light of the sun. And this is where Mary comes in place and softens that light for our capacity. The St. Jury of Ars also says that God is merciful and just, but Mary is only merciful. She only has love for her children, which is also one of the reasons why we should pray to her for intercession. Talking about that, we should always remember that we are, of course, not worshipping Mary, but only praying to her to pray for us. St. Louis uh, further explains why we need Mary to intercede for us. He says that it is always way more humble to talk to God through someone else and that we should ask ourselves whether we are pure enough, whether we have the dignity to speak for ourselves in front of God. And as we come to the conclusion that we're not because we're broken and sinful, he says that we have Jesus, uh, who is kind of an intercessor to God the Father. We ask God the Father through Jesus, but Jesus also needs an intercessor because he's God himself. So this is where we pray to Mary for intercession. St. Louis also compares that with a peasant that is presenting his whole revenue, a fruit, to the king, but instead of presenting that directly, he gives that fruit to the, to the queen. And the queen puts that fruit in a whole basket of fruits and makes that present look way more valuable and this is the same way that Mary helps us. She makes our mortifications and our good deeds way more valuable in front of God. Now let's start with the seven wrong devotions to Mary that St. Louis enumerates in his book. Those are the critical devotees, the scrupulous devotees, the external devotees, the presumptuous devotees, the inconstant devotees, the hypocritical devotees and the interested devotees. Let's start with the critical devotees. Those are mostly very proud scholars that have some sort of devotion to Mary, but they think that basically every other devotion is not good enough for them. They, for example, think that the rosary is not sophisticated enough and that they should pray something better. The second group are the scrupulous devotees. Those are people that fear to pray to Mary because they think that that way they might offend God. And here I would like to quote St. Maximilian Kolbe, who said that you should never be afraid to love, that you will love Mary too much because you will never be able to love her more than Jesus did. The external devotees are people that say tons of rosaries and have a lot of exterior devotion to Mary, but they don't meditate, for example, on the mysteries of the rosary. Then we have the presumptuous devotees, which are people that don't really care to amend their lives, they just live a sinful lifestyle, and that and they think that just because they are saying the rosary um, and having some other devotions to Mary, God will not let them die without going to confession. Then we have the inconstant devotees, which are people that are at times fervent for Mary, they would do everything for her, and then they are lukewarm again and don't pray the rosary, don't practice the rules of the confraternity that they joined. We have the hypocritical devotees, which are people that only pray to Mary in order that other people may think that they are saints and that they love Mary. And lastly, we have the interested devotees, which are people that only pray to Mary in order to get something from her. For example, to deliver them from an illness, to help them financially, 
and if they didn't have those problems, they would completely forget about Mary. After that, St. Louis talks about the five characteristics of true devotion to Mary. And that devotion is supposed to be interior, tender, holy, constant, and disinterested. Interior means that we should pray to Mary not only with our lips, but also with our heart. Tender means that we should have childlike confidence in her. Holy means that we should become holy or become saints by imitating Mary. And St. Louis has found 10 characteristics that we should imitate in Mary. And those are her profound humility, her lively faith, her continual prayer, her un universal mortification, her divine purity, her ardent charity, her heroic patience, her angelical sweetness, and her divine wisdom. I find that so beautiful. I don't know. I love that list. And after that, he says what constant devotion is. Of course, that's the exact opposite of inconstant, so that we not just pray in intervals and phases, but constantly to Mary. And disinterested, finally, that we pray to Mary not only when we have some trouble that we ask her to, to solve. Let's get to St. Louis' explanation of the total consecration. First, he warns us to not abuse that devotion because he says that the frequent prayer to Mary is a sure sign that the soul is not dead by sin, just as breathing, the respiration, is a sign that the body is not dead. And he says that we should not abuse that sign. We should not use it in order that others may think that we are saints or that we think that ourselves. And he says that... After the sacrilege of unworthy Holy Communion, abuse of devotion to Mary is the least pardonable. And now we get to the unpopular part of the book, because total consecration to Mary means that we become slaves of Mary. And I know that might sound irritating, but St. Louis explains what that means and why we should do it. First, he says that by becoming slaves of Mary, we imitate Jesus, who for nine months was basically a slave of Mary in her womb because he couldn't do anything by himself. He was dependent on her. And by doing the total consecration, we imitate that dependence that Jesus had. And we have the same dependence to Mary. He also explains what the difference between a servant and a uh, slave is and why um, that is useful for us in our relationship with Mary. And there are five differences, which are... The slave gives himself whole and entire to his master, which the servant does not. The servant exacts wages and the slave works for free, which would be that disinterested devotion, I believe. Um, the third characteristic is that the servant can leave his master whenever he pleases, while the slave can't do that. The fourth characteristic is that the master of the servant has no right of life or death over him, but the, slave, but the master has the right of life and death over the slave, which usually is not a good thing, but if the master is Mary, we can trust her. And the last characteristic is that the servant leaves after a period of time and the slave serves the master forever. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. I would give the book 9 out of 10 stars because it's not a must read, but the total consecration is a must do, in my opinion. And I found it was really helpful in order to understand who Mary is, why she is important, and why we should pray to her. That's been it for today. I hope you liked the video and see you next week. God bless and bye!